Hello, my YouTube family. Tonight, we have a hot topic. Um, tonight's topic is going to be about narcissism. Basically, what makes people vulnerable to narcissists, right? And I'm going to try to explain this based on my experience, based on the mindset that I was in before I was aware of what narcissism is or what narcissism was. Um, and so here we go. L look, you know, first of all, I want to start off with. I know that some of us live in regret of allowing so much time with that narcissist to pass by when we had all the clear signs to just get up, leave them behind. But see, when you really care about people, you're not so quick to just cut people off. You will give many people chances after chances in this lifetime. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. However, you know, there's a thing called codependency that was also a big factor that made us very vulnerable to narcissists. Also, another factor that made us very vulnerable, mainly with men, I'm not sure with women, is the need to have someone to look up to, right? Or the need to have someone there by your side because you're afraid to be alone, right? But in terms of needing someone to look up to, I struggled with that for many years of my life. And that's how I got caught up with a lot of narcissists, you know, think back in my life. I got caught up with narcissists in the streets. I got caught up with narcissists in religion or cults, like especially in the Hebrew community. A lot of Hebrew community people now, you know, I understand some of them who genuinely want to worship the Most High, but a lot of their leaders are corrupt as hell and they work for Jewish synagogues as well. You know, so that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. You know, and that's and a lot of times these cults and these Jewish followings and these religious followings, they prey on people who need somebody to look up to. Right. And I was one of those people because I couldn't look at my parents as role models. They were toxic towards me. They tried to use me as a servant, as a scapegoat uh, and try to train me to be a people pleaser, be a good boy. Do as you're told. Don't question how they treat you, right? And, you know, and one thing about me is you can look up to somebody, you can listen to everything that they say, and a lot of times they'll still disrespect you. They'll still treat you like you're not good enough. And then it made me realize you have to live and respect yourself. Now, the thing about this, is I can listen to good advice from other people. I can listen to people's life stories and, and the experiences that they have and the wisdom that they gain. And I can take bits and pieces of it, what applies to me and run with it. But I'm not going to look up to that person. I'm not going to worship that person. I will respect that person. Right. But I'm not going to make this person my decision maker over my life or the ruler over my life. And that's a mistake that I made. Right. But that's because, you know, I didn't have proper guidance and that's what happened to me, right? Also, when I was married, I kept, I pretty much kept the Jezebel chick by my side for four years of my life because when I, when me and her used to break up and stuff, she was the only one that used to come back. So I used to think that was love, like, you know, break up to make up, you know, that crazy stuff, that toxic stuff. I'm like, but damn. We, you know, she broke up with me or I broke up with her. She cheated on me and she still want to come back and try to make things right. Uh, she loves me. No, 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 no. So that's also how I got caught up with narcissists. You know, when you deal with narcissists, they can smell vulnerability from a mile away. They they really sit down and pay attention to people and they look for things to capitalize on to take advantage of because they're predatory like that, right? And so this is why I don't recommend people going to church. I don't recommend people 
like following certain people online, like uh, like certain uh, cult leaders and, you know, people who's in the witchy stuff and, you know, never neglect yourself and idolize somebody else and make them your all over your life. You know, what I do on this channel, I share my experiences. I don't want you to worship me. You come up with your own conclusions about what it is that you want to do with your life. I'm only here to tell you, you can do what you want to do, but just live in a righteous manner. And I, and I think there's nothing wrong with teaching that to people, right? Even now to the words we say, we have to be careful. Even now to the words we say about ourselves, right? Because how you feel about you is more important than how other people feel about you, right? Also, when you're dealing with people pleasing, you know, being scared to cut people off, that can make you extremely vulnerable to narcissists and you'll take on a lot of abuse because you're trying not to uh disappoint people because you know like i said before it's okay to act tough and you know i can take abuse and yeah we can talk shit together but i'm telling you people who talk shit especially to each other they secretly hate each other. I'm I'm telling you, I've sat back and watched people talk shit to each other and the and the jabs that they throw at each other. I mean, you like you sit back and observe you like, man, that sound personal. That don't sound like play. This is why I don't encourage people to talk shit or engage in shit talking with other people, because usually people who talk shit, they're real miserable. They they go through a lot of shit in their life. Why? Because they bring it on themselves. They. They stir up a lot of drama. They don't know how to enjoy peace. Right. And so you don't have to feel guilty. Right. Back to what I'm saying. You don't have to feel guilty for cutting people off. And this is something you have to train yourself to do, because that's what happened to me throughout the years. I felt guilty for cutting people off. I just thought about, you know, leaving them behind and doing me. I didn't know how to do me. You know, I wanted somebody else to teach me how they do them so I could do me just like them. And that was the wrong answer. Right. So me, I, I do what I want to do. I stick to what I know. I stick to what I do. And that's really it, you know. And I learn from those who I can learn from. Doesn't mean I'm going to worship them. Doesn't mean I'm going to kiss the ground they walk on. And like I said before in previous videos, not all elders are righteous. And even if there's an elder that's righteous, you don't have to bow down and worship them. You can learn from them. You can thank them for their wisdom, but don't bow down and worship them. A lot of times when you're dealing with aging narcissists, they prey on that kind of stuff. They try to act like they so smart and wise and really they old fools. They didn't they didn't got caught up in a bunch of crap and they're trying to ruin a bunch of young people's souls by leading them astray. I know because it happened to me. Right. And that's what makes people vulnerable is the need to want to look up to somebody, the need to not want to feel alone. Right. And to need and, and the, the, the codependency codependency will be the main reason why you have toxic friends and they talking shit to you and they slandering your name behind your back because you don't know when to let them go. You know. So I hope you all enjoyed the message. Listen, you don't have to feel guilty by cutting people off. I don't care if it's family, whoever. You can't feel guilty for doing that because in this day and age, your peace of mind is everything. Your spirit remaining in balance and intact, you know, keeping toxic people away from you can determine that. All right. Listen, I love y'all. Y'all, please be safe out there. And uh, we'll chop it up again, y'all. Bye bye now.